Thank you, Mr. Moderator, um, fellow participants. Um, the moderator already dealt with my background. And today, I'm here to speak to you on the role of the media uh, in security sector reform. I'm looking at Liberia as a case study. The media in the 1980s were basically controlled by the government then, by the military government. Before the media had to report a story, they must first get clearance from the government before reporting. And a violation of that law, you stay in the ranks of your media house, either being closed down or banned from circulation. Under the same control system by the government then, journalists were arrested and detained by the government for reporting stories that are considered critical of the government. And the action by the government then made it extremely difficult for the media to function freely. The media work on a persistent fear, on a persistent threat, and intimidation. From this background, you will agree with me that the Liberian media, that there was no, there was no press freedom in Liberia. There was a lack of press freedom in the 80s. And perhaps because of the role of the government then, it set the stage for political instability. Also, under the same control system, media houses or, or publishing houses were destroyed by, by, by fire, either by supporters of the government or members of the security apparatus. And what the point I want to stress here is that the action of the government was done with the intended to control the price, but it also intended to control civil society. As you know, civil society channels its communication to the media. And if you, if you, if you muscle the media, they're going to find it extremely difficult to communicate their feelings and thoughts effectively. When we talk about civil society, we're talking about opposition parties, interest groups, and democratic institutions or individuals that believe in the rule of law or the democratic process. Then we look at the media between 1989 to 1991. The Liberian media then was basically divided into factions. We had the government-owned media. We had the independent media, of course. We had the medias that was financed and controlled by warring, fac by warring factions. And like the National Patriotic Front Media and the independent National Patriotic Front Media. Let us look at what, what the government media is all about. The government media was basically to protect government interests, to project a positive image of the government. And when the government, by then, was being accused of human rights violation, the government media projected a positive image of the government. When the government was being accused of lack of press freedom, they projected an image both local and internationally, that there was press freedom in Liberia. So basically, this is the, the function of the government-owned media, to protect and, 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 and protect government image, even though the government may have been harassing the media, muscling the media, but they still uh, report the positive image of the government. Then we look at the independent media. The independent media is basically owned by either newspaper editors, or business individuals. And let me state here, the role of the Liberian independent media was very crucial during the 1989 to 1991, 1981, 1991. It was based on the role of the independent media that the crisis in Liberia was reported effectively, for which it brought to the attention of the international community and the sub-region that were the atrocities that had been committed by the warring factions. Let us look at the MPFL media, which was basically owned by Mr. Charles Taylor. Mr. Taylor had all the natural resources. He plundered, he plundered the resources of the country. And so his media institution was really powerful. He, yeah, because of the role, because of the role of Mr. Taylor's MPFL media, he won sympathy of the Liberian people. He won sympathy of the Liberian people, both locally and internationally. So, this is, this is just to indicate how powerful the media is in every given situation. 
whether in the land of development, in the land of crisis, it, it shows how effective and influential the media is. Then we look at the IMP, IMPF media. That was owned by Mr. Prince Johnson. Prince Johnson was, um, Prince Johnson was a, a breakaway faction of Mr. Charles to the National Picture at the front. The Liberian people did not really know, did not really know who Prince Johnson was. And so his media house or his newspaper projected to the Liberian people who Mr. Prince Johnson was. What was his role in, 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 in the breakaway of, of, from, his, uh, from Mr. Charles Taylor? Why did he do it? Because the Liberian people did not really know who Prince Johnson was. And interestingly, Mr. Johnson's media was the only media institution that was, that was operating prior to the arrival of ECOMOC. And the reason was simple, because most of, um, most of the city was basically in darkness. Because um, the vast majority of the city was basically in darkness, and, 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 and he had the Bushwa Island where he led the city, so he used the facilities that are available to produce a newspaper which really helped to promote, to tell the Liberian people who he was. Then we look at the media, the media between 1992 to 1998. Next, next, next stage, next page. All right. The media between 1992 and 1998, this follows the deployment of ECOMOC, the military intervention by West Africa. And the intervention of ECOMOC brought about sanity in the capital and its environs and encouraged the mass movement, movement of people from one segment of the city to another segment. And the fact was based on the fact that uh, when the war started prior to the, to the arrival of ECOMOC, uh, civilians were uh, basically dislocated. The families, lose fam uh, family members were one side of the, of the country to another. And so the deployment of ECOMOC facilitated the unification of families. And also it helped the media to cover, to cover stories into areas that, they, 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 that was very unsafe. And it builds, it builds a relationship between, between ECOMOC and the media itself. And of course, the media at some level became a public relation entity for ECOMOC and it helps, it helps strengthen the peacekeeping role of ECOMOC. However, the relationship between ECOMOC and the Liberian media had its own flip side. Journalists were arrested by ECOMOC um, for reporting stories that are critical of the, their peacekeeping role. And also, ECOMOC initiated, initiated a censorship law for which um, media institutions were required to obtain clearance from the government, from, from ECOMOC, before publishing a story that is related to their security operation in the country. Then we look at 1998 to 2003, the next page. State of insecurity. Despite the effort of the, uh, of the sub-region to have, um, bring about peace in, in, in Liberia, um, Liberia went back to civil war, and the reason was simple. One of the reasons why Liberia went back to civil war was based on the fact that all of the warring factions Mr. Prince Johnson, Mr. Charles, they were all based in the capital. Mondoria hosted all of the warring factions in the country. And so that, that alone was a recipe for disaster. And when the fighting erupted, the city gradually began partitioned by warring factions. And civilians that were lucky enough to flee the fighting had to take uh, refuge in um, either at the United Nations or Egomar headquarters. And because of the insecurity <clears throat> that existed, between 1998 to 2003, following the, 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 the outbreak of fighting among factions in the country, in the, in the city, the media could not function. The Liberian media disappeared because of the state of insecurity. Liberia became a failed state. There was no leadership. There was no leadership. So the media itself could not function without with the prevailing circumstances of insecurity at the time. When the media was not able to function, there was no leadership at all. So the media itself would not function and basically had to go on the ground for their own safety. Then we look at the, the external intervention, like ECOMOC. The presence of the international community 
helps facilitate the role of the media during the crisis. It provided more access to news coverage, and it became a source of assistance to the media. When I talk about source of assistance, I'm talking about being able to help newspapers or journalists to travel into areas that were not accessible, either by road. And the international community assisted the media either by, by, by airlifting journalists to areas that were not reachable by road. Um, <clears throat> so we look at, we look at um, post-conflict Liberia. <clears throat> Next stage. Post conflict Liberia, it is today we do have a proliferation of media institutions in the country, and apparently because of the relative peace that presently exists in the country. There are more independent papers on the newsstand, there's an increase of radio stations and television stations, and today's era in Liberia has become the era of relative press freedom where the media can report without harassment. The media can report without intimidation. The media can report without any fear of intimidation. And this is the environment today when, when it comes to post-conflict Liberia. The media function without government influence. The media has become more independent. The, gov the government and, and the media do have professional relationship for which the government has made itself more accessible to the media when it comes to uh, when it comes to news gathering and reporting. The media today, today, is enjoying uh, relative press freedom as compared to the 80s or early 90s. Um, <clears throat> next page. <clears throat> Lesson learned. My presentation is very short, so I want to give you most, most of the time to present. Uh, Lesson learned from the Liberian conflict. One, one of the um, lessons learned from the Liberian conflict is based on the fact that the government at the time failed to restructure its security apparatus to reflect a geographical balance. And as a result, the country itself became, uh, became a country, became a failed state. Because it's not just the, the regime of the 80s. You look at Charles Taylor, there were, there were, there were, there were conditions that were set for Mr. Tito to reform his, his security apparatus, and which he refused to do, that led to the outbreak of another civil war. So what we gather here from this presentation is based on the fact that the need for security sector reform in Africa cannot be all emphasized. It's very essential. It contributes to the stability of the region. So we cannot, there's no shortcut to that. Then we talk about the need for free and independent and professional press. You, if, you talk about, if you talk about security sector reform, you need the press, you need the media. You need the media to provide a needed education. You need the media to inform, to inform, uh, to, to educate on what security sector reform is all about. This cannot be done beyond closed door. The media need to be an integral part of security sector reform and its implementation. And you look at the media can and should play a role in security sector oversight that we talk about accountability. Because when the media is involved, you will be more accountable to, implementa to the implementation of security sector reform. So um, basically, uh, the, success, the success of this gathering here uh, um, depends on how the media can be integrated, how the media can play its role in the, in the implementation of security sector reform in Africa. As I stated earlier, <clears throat> as I stated earlier most, most, of the, most of the countries in West Africa are uh, today relatively unstable based on the fact that we have refused to restructure, to reform our security sector reform, which is, which, is, which is very essential. It brings about political stability, it brings about economic stability, and it, it, it brings about the development. So um, we, we, cannot, we, cannot, we, cannot, we cannot avoid the media in the, in the implementation of, of security sector reform. Then we talk about media can contribute to addressing the role of non-state actors in security sector. We talk about, what we're talking about um, non-actors, like the vigilantes, you know, people who organize the groups to protect themselves. The media can also help in that process by, 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 by educating the people, either the dangers involved or, or the prospects in it. And so, um, basically, um, 
Uh, basically, these are, these are the important points that I consider important uh, in my presentation when it comes to the, the, the librarian media in the 80s and, and when it comes to security sector reform. Um, as a moderator, um, fellow participants, as I said, my presentation was not going to be lengthy because my, my, my co-presenter is, you know, is, is having enough time to do what she has to do. Um, a fellow participant I, and the organizer of this program, I want to um, extend to you my sincere uh, thanks and appreciation for affording me the opportunity to stand before you here and exchange some of the ideas I have when it comes to media and security sector reform using Liberia as a case study. And if you have any questions to ask, I'm waiting to, uh, to answer. But please, let your uh, questions be limited to what was discussed. Thank you very much.